I uh, just want to quickly show you how uh, I split my tracks up to use them with the APC40. Um, kick off, I've just dragged uh, Got To Have Your Love Mantronics into the into this slot here. As you can see straight away, um, Ableton sometimes misses the first beat. So whilst there is a, um, a transient there, you can pretty much create one anywhere you like. So you're not tied down to where it's detected one. I'm going to make one there. Uh, click on it. Set one to one here. Walk from here straight. With that, that gives a pretty good uh, uh, hold on all e electronic music, but there's a couple of things I'll look at straight away. First is at the five point. Let's see how close we are. Well, we're there or thereabouts, actually. Uh, we might want to pull that just so that the uh, transient hits on that. Uh, and then, as you see, as I've zoomed down, it's giving you kind of bars at every, uh, what's that, 16? So it's a good idea that if you did have the time, uh, I'd go in at 17, for example, uh, find 17 and make sure that's just on the money, double click it and hold it. Rather than go in at kind of 25 level or 24.4.3, um, this gives you the ability to keep the kind of the swing in the track, something that sounds too over quantized isn't always uh, that nice sounding. Um, I'd move all the way through to the end uh, pulling everything back in, um, but generally speaking, if I go for one or two at the front, one at the end, then if we have a look at, say, 97, uh, should be there or thereabouts, a little bit off, so let's just pull it back. As you can see, if I've done one at the end, and one at the beginning, one at the end, just moving one of these will actually turn it into a, into a warp marker, um, effectively. So... With the track warped, what I'm going to do is I'll drag it across into the session, uh, into arrangement mode rather. There we go here. In this, I, I'd quite like to have bar as my grid size, um, because what that enables me to do, if I zoom in a little bit, uh, if I drag that right to the start, take a second to catch up, there we go. Okay, so if I play this track from the beginning, you hear there's no sound, so I've got to take the overdrive off. Excellent. And really, the keyboard's your friend on this. If you click on the um, on the track itself, as you can see, you've got a kind of marker here. You can then move with the cursor arrow. arrow. Um, Command E splits the track. And what I'm going to do is just listen to the track as I go through. And the second, there's going to be the vocal. I think it's a 17. There we go. So I'd do that all the way through, just making the uh, the split with Command and E at where it changes. Going back, Command and R allows you to rename it. That part, I'm actually going to call every time I close my eyes. For me, because I put it in brackets, that means it's a vocal, but it also tells me the start of the vocal, uh, what's happening. Uh, command R, we call that the synth. And that was Command R. I normally have stuff uh, named the same in most tracks. Um, so you'll have intro, build, uh, when the drums kick in, that sort of stuff. I just name it as what I'm hearing as opposed to anything um, specific. Intro, okay. That's pretty good. Because you've done the warping before, there's not much need for um, going all the way through it and tidying everything up. If you do this, it makes a lot of sense uh, to do the warping first. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drag it back across here. There we go. Now what I've got is a header, which is the full track. And below that is the track split into its various parts. I'm going to highlight all of those and very quickly right click, right click and crop clips. And what that will do, if I click on the intro, now uh, your clip is exactly as long as you want it to be. So, and as you can hear, I've got that playing on track number one as well, so I'll make sure I've got that stopped. Now, that did stop, so what you want is actually to be able to have a follow action on it. Looking at the length of it there, 1 minus 5 is 4, 5 minus 1, 
play the next uh, and obviously when that goes into action as soon as it's launched it, it's going to effectively show you there's a follow action uh, that's going to happen so that'll do it for you every time um, how I'd normally go about colouring the tracks is I'd place all of them as green uh, that have follow actions in. Green meaning go, so it's going to move past that track onto the next one. Uh, the two end tracks, were I, I'll generally find that the first track, the penultimate track and the end track are the ones that have the different colours. Because, for example, this might well be the outro, just dropping down to a drum beat or just a melody playing softly moving out. What I like sometimes is just to keep that and hold that so I'll have that as orange, meaning that, it, like a traffic light, it's ready to go, but you've actually got to make some movement um, to make it stop or finish. And the last clip, although this one is the most of the rest of the track, I'll have that as red. Red meaning stop, meaning nothing's going to play after it. And often that track itself will be no more than a, a beat or a bar. Um, it'll be the last cymbal crash, the, the last uh, echo. Something, anything that, that when the track you're mixing into breaks you can just trigger that and it will just fade out into nothingness now the time I've taken there uh, isn't particularly long um, but normally I'll have this uh, split down into 15 20 tracks uh, just so that I can see where I am once I've done that and I, I've broken it all through I'm gonna go back in command R left arrow and as you can see here this is a four bar um, clip so I'm going to title it for, with a down arrow, it takes me straight into titling the next one. Uh, this one, again, is a, a four bar. So I can actually look at the clip and see how long it is and consider when I might want to trigger it uh, compared to the, the track that, that's already playing. Moving through, fantastic. What I'm going to show you very quickly, though, is how my working pattern has now changed because I'm going to have this with no... Uh, follow action. So just to confirm, it's going to play through the, the four bars and the four bars is it. That's all that is in that clip. And it plays the one below. Um, as you can see, there's no follow action. But what I do have is my isotonic patch. Uh, isotonic, I'm naming all my devices as uh, old rave tunes until I decide what the official title like control surface master thing would be. As each clip comes to the end, half a bar before the end, half a beat rather, it's going to play the next one as you can see, very very smooth. This part displays the clip that's playing and it can also trigger the part of it that uh, that is playing again um, but for example if I was playing the build and I wanted to jump quickly to the next one I can fire the synth but then in the synth as well I could also play a two bar loop and of course that's not going to follow action now because as you can see the, the state has changed to loop um, but halving that A little bit out of my time in there, but I'll get it eventually. Um, that's about it. The, the fact that I'm not having to write all my follow actions is saving me a, an age when splitting up tracks. And if you look at this there, that, that would represent five clips. So one kind of red box on the APC. Um, I mean, you can really jam, really do some funky stuff. Uh, I'm just looking at the next step, which is mapping all of this within the APC. At the moment, it just works as... Uh, MIDI mapping standard, so whatever um, controller you're using, uh, you have access to doing all of those things. Anyway, thanks for the time. Speak again soon. Bye.